This is Dr. Sharik Ali. I'm here today at the University of Sharjah and the Faculty of Health Sciences. I have been invited by Professor Ibrahim Mustafa and his team at the University of Sharjah to deliver a lecture to the physiotherapy faculty on chiropractic management of lower back pain with specific emphasis on the protocols of chiropractic biophysics and the clinical biomechanics of posture. It has been a great day. I've really enjoyed from the bottom of my heart. It has been so humbling to be invited by this esteemed group. It is my hope, with God's help, that we will continue the advancement of non-surgical spinal correction through the application of chiropractic and specific treatment protocols to correct the alignment of the body structure so that suffering people can live a life pain-free, free of suffering, and so they have a positive health outcome, not just for themselves, but for their children, for their grandchildren, to change their family tree and live fulfilled lives. That is my hope, that is my prayer, that this is not just for me and my family, but for you, for your loved ones, for the community at large. May the people of Sharjah continue to prosper. May the people of Dubai have healthy lives. Through the vehicle of chiropractic and spinal correction, may people have fulfilled lives and be whole, by having their spines straight, aligned, having a clear nervous system through the vehicle of chiropractic, may the health of society continue to improve into the future. It is an honor to be invited today and I look forward to being here again in the future. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Okay, and I'd like to welcome each and everyone here for being up today. I am extremely grateful to Dr. Sharik Ali for being with us and accepting our invitation okay, and taking time out of his part schedule to be with us. Dr. Sharik Ali, one of the best chiropractors in the United Arab Emirates and one of the best spinal rehabilitation specialists okay, maybe in the Middle East. Uh, I believe this lecture will be very, very interesting for everyone. This lecture will focus mainly on the management of lower back pain from the chiropractic perspective, and it will focus and highlight the role of the chiropractic biophysic technique as structural rehabilitation, which has emerged as one of the most important clinical outcomes for healthcare. And to be honest, almost this part is made in our physiotherapy rehabilitation program. That's why I believe this lecture will be very interesting for anyone dealing with spinal rehabilitation. Dr. Sharik. Thank you for your time, okay, and we are looking forward to listen to you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum and hello to everybody, faculty, Professor Ibrahim, and faculty members. Thank you very much for having me. Right then, um, may I have a quick show of hands, please? All right. Um, I understand we're all in, uh, predominantly physiotherapists. Are any part of us graduated physiotherapists in active practice here. Could I just have a show of hands? Anybody? Great. Excellent. 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 There'll be some things for you. Are there anybody emerging in our final year about to graduate? All right. Good. Good. Like to see. Are there anybody in the earlier years? Either first year? Second year? All right. Good. Well, there's something for everyone. Now, what I want to, this is the only time I'm going to say, get your phones out. Get your phones out and just take a picture of that email because if there is anything at the end of this that you are unsure of or if you have any questions, every, anything, any research you want or if we can help in any way, please just drop us, just drop us a line. It would be my pleasure to help you. Right. 
I have been invited to speak on chiropractic and chiropractic management of low back pain. Um, really, I'm humbled because it is my great professor and friend, Professor Ibrahim, who is an, an authority in this field. I just want you to know that we are very privileged here to have this uh, professor here, for he has led a good portion of the research in the advances of conservative spinal correction and rehabilitation. There is a lot to learn from this gentleman. All right. <laughs> right then, let's, let's move on. Thank you all for sending your expectations. There was many. There was a lot of attendees and there was many questions. And from that I gathered that there's going to be um, a few key points that what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what is chiropractic. All right, so that's what we've come to know. What is chiropractic and its role in healthcare? We have many disciplines. All right, we have your wonderful physiotherapy discipline. We have the medical profession. We have other forms of traditional and complementary healthcare. We have homeopathy. We have acupuncture, to name just a few. Where does chiropractic fit into this? And I'm going to tell you that the fact that you are here means a lot. It means you have an interest to know more, to expand, and I'm telling you, it is professionals like yourselves that I will want to work with. And so therefore, this, this is not a lecture, this is not a teacher and student, this is not colleagues. You are my future friends. And inshallah, I hope that this relationship continues. We're going to find out and talk about what is the most evidence-based method in chiropractic correction of low back disorders. Chiropractic has many techniques and systems. As they say, there's many ways to skin a cat, right? You know, there's not just one way. But we will, we will, what in my opinion is the most advanced and specialized protocol in bringing about correction, in helping people avoid surgery and to live a healthy life. And this professor here has been a big part of that. Please, if we could just have a couple of hands. This professor would be big. And we're going to talk about the evidence. We're going to talk about the application of that. How do I? This is my opinion. This will all be my opinion, but that's what you've come for. You've come for my opinion. And I'll tell you how I and how you, in practice, whether you're doing this now, or if not yet, you soon will be in practice, some simple things we can do that you can start to implement to be able to quickly identify potential structural issues that could have a future impact on the body. All right? And... At the end, yes, in case I forget, yeah, I sometimes ramble on. I could speak for four hours. I've got to condense this, yeah? So if I do forget anything, forgive me if I look at my cheat sheet, but there will be a special opportunity for the University of Sharjah students and your families or anyone who is associated who is in this gathering today. All right, fair enough. Should we get going? Right then. Why do we do what we do? There is an epidemic going on. There is actually, what well, I would say, the major pandemic. All right. Um, a few years back, Forbes magazine, they interviewed me and they wanted to know about the epidemic of low back pain. And, and I talked about that and you can, you, can, you can visit that. And it is pandemic. Low back pain is the number one cause of disability. All right. Everybody, 80% of the population will suffer low back pain in some part of their life. All right. So this is no small thing. We need to address this. All right. And isn't it strange that we are advancing in technology, but yet this is not going. It's getting worse. 
the magazine, it was the healthcare edition, and they, they asked me about, um, they were talking about technology, and they were talking about nano health, and, and real advances in technology, and how we can use this, uh, the phones, and uh, apps, and this, and then, and then it was me, and if you read it, I was talking about, no, these, these stupid smartphones, they're not good for our bodies. They're, they're ruining our posture. They're ruining our health. We should, we should, throw, we should throw them away. You know? I, was, I was quite the opposite. And um, so some things I may say today might be a little contrarian. But then if you ask my wife, Sana, who's my boss, uh, she will agree that yes, I often say things that are quite antagonistic. Yeah, I, I, I might like to fight. <laughs> right. So let's let's go. Let's let's get this thing going. All right, chiropractic in the UAE, as in all healthcare profession, chiropractic is a regulated profession here in the UAE, and there is a scope of practice. All right, as per the DHA, which is the jurisdiction I practice under, the Dubai Health Authority, well, what is it? It is known as chiropractic is a system of primary health care. It's concerned with the diagnosis, treatment and prevention of disorders of the neuromusculoskeletal system. The highlighted parts, I especially want, we're going to go into these, all right? And its effects on these disorders on general health. All right. Please note, we must start with this. It's not the treatment of back pain. Just want to get this thing clear. Chiropractic is not just the treatment of a back pain. It is affecting health. And we're going to talk about that more. There is an emphasis on manual techniques. All right, manual. We'll talk, we'll talk about manual techniques, which I'm sure you're familiar with. The use of our hands, right? Physical hands, right? There are there are machines that one can utilize as adjunctive therapies, which I know in the physiotherapy faculty you'll know much better than me. There, there are many uh, technologies again that are coming along. However, primarily, chiropractic is about the hands, manual. All right. Techniques including the joint adjustment and or manipulation, which in chiropractic we call it a specific adjustment of the spine, with a particular focus on the subluxation. Again, we'll talk about this term. Has anybody heard of the term subluxation? Anybody familiar? Good, good. Again, professions have different meanings. All right. In architecture, we have a bridge. The dental profession have a different meaning of a bridge. So, I was using the same. There is a medical term of a subluxation, and then in chiropractic we have a subluxation, and we will talk about that as well, which is quite imperative to our understanding. We'll talk about the relationship between our structure. What do we mean when I'm saying structure? We're talking about our body frame. The relationship with this human body that God has given us, and the relationship between that and how this impacts our health. Strange when you think about it, amazing. So what we're saying is this, or this, or this, can impact our health? Yes. Yes. The function is determined by our structure, and it is coordinated by our nerve system. This is how the body is controlled. We're going to talk about that. And our focus is the restoration of health by accessing that system. It worked. Right. Let's go through. I think terminology, semantics, these things, these things are important, right? When we, if we're going to have a conversation and we're going to speak, which I will ask for some participation as we go along, um, it's important that we're on the same page, all right? So, so health. 
what, what is health? You know, that's what we're all after. What is health? Well, as for the World Health Organization, which I'm sure we are all very familiar with, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. All right? let's, let's ponder on these things. It's not the absence of disease or illness. All right? So if we're healthy, it's not just a case, uh, yesterday I had a headache, but today I have no headache, I'm healthy today. You know? All right? <laughs> you know? Or the person who has, who's walking around fine, he's gone for a marathon, the professional athlete, the runner, and next day he drops dead. But he had no symptoms, he was feeling fine. What? <laughs> he went from total health to total death, just like that? No. Health is not the absence of symptoms or disease. Okay? And health is not, I'm not in pain, that means I'm healthy. I have a headache today, I have a low back today, or I'm unhealthy. I took some medicine, or I had a massage, or I had some chiropractic, and then... And, I had a physiotherapy session and I feel great, whether it be chiropractic, physiotherapy, anything, and I, and I feel better today. That doesn't, the fact that you had the symptom doesn't mean that you're unhealthy, and the fact that you don't have the symptom today, it doesn't mean that you are healthy. Yeah? We, we've, got to, we've got to understand the distinction here. So what is chiropractic? This is why you've come, isn't it? Chiro chiropractic and how we help people. It's the science, art, and philosophy of all things natural. First of all, all things natural. And also, it's making that adjustment, which you may see on TV, you may see ad adjusting the segments of the spine to bring about the correction of the cause of disease, dis-ease, disharmony. It's also done by hand. It's a Greek term. Kir. Kir, hand, praktos, work. To work by hand. All right? It was developed in the year 1895 by a gentleman by the name of Daniel David Palmer, or as we like to say, D.D. Uh, Palmer. He was a Canadian gentleman who migrated to the US, to the state of Iowa. Davenport. And he was a scientist. He, he worked in many different disciplines. He, was, he worked in magnetism. Right? So, so he, he worked with magnetism and uh, he, was, he did many other things. He was a beekeeper. He, he, he was involved in many things. He was a lover of life and a study of life. Okay? And he, he knew of the art of manipulation, which goes back many years. There's many relics that you can see, you know, there's many relics, many hieroglyphics, you can see many years back to the time, you know, in, in Egypt, the, the Pharaoh's times, all over the world you can see many signs dating back many thousands of years of treating ailments via the spine, okay? Even Hippocrates, many, many people champion Hippocrates as the father of medicine, he said, in disease, look to the spine first. So Daniel David Palmer, he, he, was, he was familiar with this. You know, he, he, he was familiar with this. He was an educated man and um, he, he came in contact with a school caretaker. This, I come to this um, faculty, university faculty and, and it, it, just, it just makes me think of the, the early days and I, and I start to think what it would have been like in an old school and this janitor caretaker we call it, named Harvey Lillard he came to D.D. Palmer and he said, Dr. Palmer, I've been suffering. He noticed, he, 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 he noticed in him, he, he slightly stooped, he, he, his, his, his position wasn't quite, quite right. And he noticed, and, he, and he's, he used to walk with a slight lean, and he said, Harvey, well, what's, what's going on? And he said, well, well D.D., I'm deaf in one ear. I can't hear. I've been deaf for 17 years. 
17 years. Well, and uh, he related that he had had an injury. He was, he was, he was cleaning one day. He was stooped over. He had a, he had a jolt and, a fall, and he heard something crick, crick in his neck, he said. And from that day forward, he, he was not able to, to hear out of one ear. Okay? So, so Didi was a, he was an intelligent man. He, was, he studied science. He studied the body. And he was interested in the art of manipulation. And he, and he said, okay, so he, he, he did an experiment. He did an experiment. All right. Today's experiments, we need a uh, lot of approvals. Right, Professor? <laughs> yes, you can. You know, in, in those days, he said, come here, come here. <laughs> he, he devised that. He, he knew the body. He knew these nerves go to different organs, cells, and tissues. He, he knew he'd studied anatomy. So he, div he devised, and he felt, and he felt something that we know as palpation, right? In those days, he, he felt... Harvey's spine, and he noticed in the upper thoracic spine, he, he, he noticed that there was a, a area of restricted movement. So, so he had an idea. He said, what if we, I get this vertebra by the bony process, the spinous process and the transverse processes, and we, and we create movement there, and I apply a pressure, I believe that that is going to help you. So, Harvey Lidl, he had nothing to lose. He said, fine. So then, Didi Palmer, with his hand and his mind and his anatomy, he made, he felt the bony process and he made a correction. And that was termed the spinal adjustment. He did that a second time. Lo and behold, Harvey Lillard's hearing was restored. Restored. Amazing. It's in the history books, you can, you can look at it. I said, wow, <laughs> we're onto something, right? <laughs> we're, we're onto something. And Didi said, uh, okay, I found the cure. I found the cure for deafness. I found the cure. And he got his son. His, his son at the time, whose name was Bartle Joshua Palmer, BJ Palmer, who was 13 years old at the time. He said, <laughs> he said son, <laughs> we're on to a winner here. We found the cure of deafness. Inform the whole state. Inform the whole states. Inform the US. Let them know that we've called, uh, we found the cure. So then, uh, they, they, put, they put out the pamphlets. He got on his typewriter, the young boy. They put out pamphlets. They, they, they circulated. And so, yes, from far and wide, the, the people, they came on their horseback and they, uh, people come, farmers, many, many workers from all over, all over, this, all over the state. They came to have their hearing restored. And then, and they came. They had their adjustments. And um, lo and behold, not a single other person is recorded was cured of deafness. It, <laughs> it was no, um, nobody else was cured. Now I know you may have spoken to chiropractor. I've had myself in my practice. In my practice, I can I can recall three people. I can recall who, through my care, who did not come for deafness, but through my care, have had their hearing improve. I've had people come to me. Not for eyesight problems. They've come to me quite commonly for a lower back issue. Lower back issue, they've come for that. But by us removing interference and us making adjustments to the spine, they've said, you know what, doctor, my, 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 I can see clearer now. I can see clearer through my eyes. So, so you may have heard these things. Um, but back then, there was not one more recorded proof of curing of deafness. But something else happened. Something else happened. The patients that came in, they said, you know what? I, my deafness is still there. My deafness is still, but you know what? I, I don't have that sciatic anymore. I don't have that sciatic. I used to have pain in my leg. I don't have that anymore. Another, another, another uh, person would come and say, you know what? No, yeah, my deafness did improve, but uh, you know what? I used to have an asthma sufferer, and, and asthma is gone. 
Okay, but I'm breathing clear right now. You know? Another person would say, you know, I, I just get these terrible allergies. And you know what, my, my deafness, it's not, it's not cured. Well, it's not any worse, but my, my, allergies are, my allergies are getting better. And the other person would say, you know, and, and then people would, there'd be people, that, and they would all record this, um, uh, people who were walking crooked, and then they were leaving, walking straight. And everything was being documented. Until eventually... He got come to know that chiropractic was seeming to cure everything from deafness in some examples to, to allergies, to ingrowing toenails, to back problems, to whatever is under the sun. And it seemed to, chiropractic seemed to be a cure for everything. And then it was termed that chiropractic, you have no need to suffer anymore. You have no need to suffer for chiropractic is the cure of all disease. The reality is, though, that chiropractic is not a cure for back pain. It's not a cure for hearing. The truth is, chiropractic is a cure for nothing. No chiropractor can cure you of anything. And no medical doctor can cure you of anything. My physiotherapist, with all respect, the physiotherapist cannot cure anything. It is the body that does the curing and the healing. It is this internal body system. It is this, this, this power that is inside us, which is greater than us, which I call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which, which, is, which is the energy or something greater than ourselves. And we must recognize this, that there is a power within us that does the healing. The same power and intelligence is continually working on us. The same, the same energy and power is working on us that if you were to cut your skin today, what would be the treatment for a cut skin? What is the treatment for this? <laughs> just, leave just leave it, right? <laughs> the body's doing the job, right? Okay. <laughs> what is the treatment for the baby inside the mother growing? What is the treatment for that? What's the medical condition of a baby growing inside mother? <laughs> does, it, does, it, does it need help inside the mother? Does it, how does it know? How does it know how to grow? Did we ever think about this? Or no, you're thinking, oh, Dr. Sharik, you're talking silly now. You're talking stupid, right? No, but this is the, the. Of course, there is an inborn intelligence that is making the baby grow. But we need to use that same. We need to recognize that same power is working outside of us as well. All right. When the babies were there, uh, mothers here. I'm sure there must be some. Mothers in the room, okay? When, when you're, when you're, um, for any mothers who, who, who nurse their babies, when your baby was born and, and your baby lay on your tummy, how did you teach the baby how to suck your nipple? How, how did you train your baby to do that? <laughs> or did the baby just know how to do it innately? This is, the body is continually working to keep itself in preservation. Do, do we agree with that, right? So, so the, the body knows what to do. All right? But it can be interfered with. That, that working of the body starts from the brain. It goes all the way down the spinal cord and it goes out through these nerves and it can... And that energy, that life force which controls our body can be disrupted or interfered with. That interference is what D.D. Palmer understood and he said, I am not the first person to manipulate the spine. He was not the first. It was done many thousands of years before that. There is evidence that he was not. But he said, I am the first person who has specifically identified the cause of dis-ease or disharmony via nerve interference and made the correction of that with my hand to bring about the correction 
of dis-ease or disarmony, bring back to harmony. That's what chiropractic is. And from there, we have developed. Nerve interference. Nerve interference, this is, this is a, this is essence what we're working on. The body. Let's go to a science. For everything I say, by the way, everything I, I've got, I've got the evidence. I'm not going to bore you with it. If you want anything, you just send a message. I'll be happy to share everything. A lot of this evidence is my friends here, from my friend here, <laughs> from the great professor here. But um, we have, we, everything I say is, is my opinion based on logic, reason, my clinical experience and available evidence. Okay. What's the first thing? When, when, when we're born, no, before we're born, when we're in the mother's stomach, because we, we need to start from this, life. What is life? When we're born, what is the first organ that forms? Can anybody know? Can anybody mention what is the first structure that forms? If you're unsure, just think about if you've seen a baby at 12 weeks, the 12 week scan or something. What is, any ideas? What, what is the first thing that's formed? The heart. Heart, good. That's, that's, that's one of the early things. Anything else? Spine. Spine. Oh, who said spine? No. Yes, yes, yes. The spine. The brain and spinal cord. The brain and spinal cord is the first thing that's formed, and it's formed with a structure. It's formed straight with gentle curves. How do we know this? If you go back to the journal, uh, British Medical Journal BMJ in, I believe it was the 1970s, maybe 1975, don't quote me on this, but I have the research. Professor Bagnall found it was, it was a test done where there were fetuses either that had to be aborted and at a very early stage, they checked those fetuses and they had a brain, they had a spinal cord with these natural curves. Spinal. It is via this brain and spinal cord that the rest of the body is controlled. Our heart cannot beat unless there's a signal from the brain going down, out through the nerves, to the heart. We cannot breathe without our nerve system, without our brain communicating with the body and allowing the lungs to inhale and exhale air. Anything that happens requires a signal from the nerve system. So what we deal with is something called a vertebral subluxation. Now this is where we come in chiropractic, right? We have a subluxation, vertebral subluxation, where two bones have become restricted in movement. You see these nerves? This, this nerve, this life energy that controls the body, that controls the back, all right? It is, it, it comes from the brain, it comes down the spinal cord, it exits out through the IVF, the intervertebral foramen, and it supplies the organ, cell, or tissue. That communication, that signal from this computer, that Wi-Fi communication, I say, it can be disrupted, right? It can be disrupted if there is a misalignment of that spine, creating pressure on nerves, and we call that a vertebral subluxation. Before we get to this, I want some, I want some answers, all right? How do we get this subluxation, this vertebral subluxation, all right? How could we get it? Give me some examples of what you think would be a bone in the vertebra to come out of place, to move away from its desired orientation the way it was made. What would be an example, please, Trauma. anybody? Trauma, such as give me give me some examples. You, you can shout them out. Shout them out. Um. A car accident. Okay, that could impact. That could certainly create a subluxation. What do you think else could create a fall? A fall. Fall. Very good. Anything else? Prolonged posture. Problem. Prolonged posture. Okay. Pro prolonged posture. Or would you say an? a less than ideal posture. What is an example of a prolonged posture, such as when? Sitting on a computer. Oh. 
what everybody's doing here now. Uh, sitting. <laughs> sitting. Right. <laughs> everybody's doing. But it's, we're going to need to. We're going to need to get up in a moment. Yeah. I don't want everybody to be have this prolonged posture. But certainly driving. Anything else? Anything else that we feel? Body pathology. Sudden twist. S sudden twist. Yes. So anything else? Uh, pathologies? Any, any that come to mind? TB spine, 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 Absolutely. Spine, Absolutely. Absolutely. That can cause a physical strain. Allergic process? Allergic process? Aging. Aging. Aging process. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, yes. Yeah. The aging process, very, very good. What we find with the aging process, very, very good, I want to talk about that, is that when we look when we study and analyze the spine with the aging process, we see that some areas have become very um, aged, decaying, arthritic. And other areas remain relatively healthy. So we need to remember that. Like then we, so we, a question to ponder, is it age or is it the length of time a problem has been occurring? That's something to think about. So far, everybody has mentioned certain, everybody's mentioned conditions or circumstances when that can happen. It happens in three forms. There's stress in the body. Physical, chemical, and mental. So far, I believe only one type has been mentioned. Physical. All right, it's the most common one that comes to mind. We'll be talking about physical mainly today, but chemical causes of nerve interference. <coughs> did anybody think, does anybody here believe that the type of food we eat could possibly have an impact on our body, on our muscles, on our nerves? Yes? Could bring about stress in our system. We've heard of inflammatory foods. Don't you think that, that could have possibly an impact on our body? What about, you know, you know everybody, is, everybody is into uh, fitness and health. Fitness and health. What, about, what about the pollution in the air? What about the toxins we breathe through the air? Do you think that could possibly have an impact? Yes. Oh boy. Makes sense? What about, what about, here's, here's what I love. What about the, um, the, the couple, uh, the, the husband and wife, you know, they, 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 they're slim, you know, they're, 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 they're slim, they exercise, they go to the gym, they buy organic food, they eat right, eat healthy, look at themselves, but yet, they're having marital problems. They're stressed at home. They are not getting on. Do you think that mental stress could possibly have an effect on the body? Yes. yes. What we're finding is that we have physical, chemical and emotional stress. And when, as my colleagues, my respected colleagues and friends know, when you are ever with a patient, yes, we're looking for physical, physical derangement. We're looking for physical problems, but we must also try and consider the cause of that. Why is a posture misaligned? What, why, is, um, uh, why is this person, he's had many treatments, he's had many sessions, why is he not healing? Why does the same issue happen again? Why is it that we always need our shoulders rubbed here? And here, why is it that, why is it that the medicine or the chiropractor didn't, didn't help my back pain, but when I went on holiday, that seemed to cure, when I was in the, when I was relaxing on holiday and two weeks off from work, that, that, that seemed to cure my pain. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, there's many different factors, all right? Okay, so, in, so, in my protocol, when, when a patient comes to see me, I want to look at their posture because it gives an idea of the nervous system. All right, so, um, son, can I, can I borrow you, please? And this is what we're going to do, and we're, we're all going to do this together. This is something that we can Im immediately start implementing. When a 
There are many different ways. In the, in the CBP chiropractic biophysics, they use different coordinates, which was um, Cartesian coordinates, how your body is twisted in the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis. We look for rotations and translations. Quite technical, but in, in, a, in a practical sense, as a starting point, we look for landmarks. Okay, we, we, we look for landmarks. What we, we check the body, ear level, shoulder level, scapulae, iliac crest. From the side, very easy, we can see ear to shoulder. We, we just look at these, with, at these positions and, and they'll be able to give us an indicator of what structurally, an idea of what potentially could be going on inside the body. All right, thank you, thank you very much. And we're gonna go through that in a moment. But, is posture itself, we're concerned about posture, is posture itself an accurate indicator of spinal alignment? We understand that posture, is important because it gives us an idea about our structure and we agree that structure dictates our function all right so now we must assess that structure right so who who here does postural exams who does do postural assessments who here no one all right only me okay so um <laughs> who, who, uh, all, 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 so that's why that's what i like to hear yeah postural assessment so we we can get an indicator of potentially where there might be areas of stress and and uh, an injury going on or an ailment that gives an indication of a potential area for us to work on the body right let's look at the posture though Who's had a forward head posture? Anterior head carriage. This. Yeah. We've all heard of it, right? Would you say it's quite common? Yes? yes. Quite common? Yes. yes. <laughs> Over the age you get past teenagers or even in teenage years and uh, what percentage have it? About 100% of people have this, all right? All right. Now, before what what I used to do is when I when I first when I when I first started work, I used to think that yeah, okay, you've got a forward head posture. That means that yes, you you've got a problem in the curve of your neck, and I know that I get I know pretty well what is the position. But do I really? You can have a forward head posture. But when you look inside with the x-ray, you might see a forward translation with a normal healthy curve. You might see a loss of curve with the same presentation of posture. And you may see also a reversal, a kyphotic net, which is actually a, a bad health outcome. You have a very bad health outcome with this. Um, but you cannot tell that by the anterior head carriage. Hence why this specific system of biophysics which we'll talk about came, came about and why um, there's much research been done in this and that's why if you ever go to a chiropractor or another health professional if you're telling somebody that they have a bad posture or they have a forward head lean tell them that their posture doesn't look right. Don't just tell them that your spine on the inside is wrong. We don't know until we've seen with an x-ray. So, oh, before I get to this, we've got a specific protocol. Actually, before I get to that, we're going to break out. We're going to have a bit of a, bit of a break. Right, then. Um, everybody, I want you to do something. I want you to take inside your folders. I hope you've all got a pen, yes? And I want you to take out, I believe, the first sheet. Has everybody got that, please? Can everybody do that? It's, um... Numbers, numbers may, may I have one as well, please? May I... Just one, just one, I just want one. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> If you're required, you can have a look around and check people. 
Everybody got it? Yeah? Right there. By the way, why don't we all just stand up for a second? Just, just, just get up. Let's get some, let's get some energy in here. Yeah. Let's, let's, because uh, we have an exam. We have an examination today. All right. Everybody, just stand up and then sit down. Let's have everybody sit down again now, please. Right then, everyone, I'm going to be examining everyone. This is a test. This is a test. All right. Everybody got a pen? Yes? Everybody got a pen? Right then. We're going to, let's see, let's do it for one minute. I'm going to do, we're going to do a one minute test. And there's, a, there's many numbers on here, right? What I want you to do, I'm going to give you one minute. I want you to go in chronological order. I want you to find number one. When you find number one, I want you to circle it. Please, we don't cheat in exams. Oh, oh too far, all right. When you found number one, guess what I would like you to find next? Number two, right? And then after that, number three. But remember, we are students, we are fair, and we don't cheat, all right? all right? We don't, we will not progress on to the next one until we find. So, we're going to have one minute, reset, on your mask, and set, go. Come on, what are we getting? Go. Let's see. You have to circle one, then look for two. It's the same on both sides, by the way. Oh, we're fast here. Look at not many circles, sir. I'm not seeing many circles. <laughs> Come. No. Done how? I found till seven. Keep going. I want to know how many. Have. Let's see how many we're getting. Oh, it's 30 seconds already. 30 seconds. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no detention, there's no, there's no prize, this is, this is for ourselves. Come on, we've had 45 seconds, not long. Come on, come on, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Khalas, khalas. Is that bell? We can yes, we can. Well done, everyone. Well done, well done. All right. <laughs> my, my respected colleagues, please, no more che no cheating. This is finished now. Khalas. <laughs> right then. <laughs> Okay, just, just, this is, this is just, this is just a game, of course, just a game. <laughs> Keep your hand up if you got to five. Five? Five. Oh, okay. alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we got to five. Keep your hands up if you reach seven. Seven days. Okay. Oh, there's too many, too good here. Okay, um, who got up to ten? Okay, all right, forget. Who got up to 20? Keep your hand up if you got up to 20. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, so, always the, the ladies at the back always. Yeah, yeah. Okay, who got up to 30? Okay, so we got up to 25, 20, 26, 22, something like that. Yeah, so the maximum was about 20. Okay, just, this is, just remember your own score. Just remember, this is not about anybody else, it's about ourselves. Okay? Now then. I want you now to take that piece of paper and fold it like so. Make it exact, please. Everybody done that? Yeah? Good, good. Everyone done that? Now then, it's going to get tricky now. I want you to do the same thing again. Yeah, right? <laughs> but it's got to be exact. Yeah, it's got to be exact. Fold it again. See, I will... You see? 
<laughs> we will see who is a good physiotherapist here, who has good hands. Yeah, we'll be able to tell now. Yeah. <laughs> right, got that? Right. Now then, after that, this will this will become very tricky now, very tricky. We're going to go the other way and we're going to fold. Exact, please. Anybody stuck? Oh, gosh. We good? Are we getting there? <laughs> right then. And lastly, once more. It's got to be exact, corner to corner. <laughs> Thank you for your participation. <laughs> This is <laughs> this was a test as who can follow instruction. No, no, good. All right, right. Now then, we've got it all a nice square. Let's open it up again. <laughs> Gonna see some magic here. The Everybody got it up straight? Can everybody just show a hands? Everybody got this? Everybody show hands? Yes? We have it. Make it flat so you can see, yes? Okay. Everybody got a pen? Okay. Now, now the side that you wrote on, that was test one. Flip to the other side, please. Flip to the other side. Okay. Now, go to the bottom right of the paper. Do you all see, if you were to start again, you would start at one, right? Yes. Can we see one there? Yes. Go to the square next to it. Two. Next to that? Three. Do we get the idea? Yes. There's one minute. Let's see if you can better your score. Go. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, keep going. Come on. <laughs> 15 seconds. Oh my god. Who could? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> 27, 28, 29. We have 30 seconds now. 30 seconds. All right, 45 seconds, 15 seconds left. Keep going, keep going. Who's beaten their old score, by the way? All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Khalas. <laughs> yeah. It's fun now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love exams only when somebody gives me the answer. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They still like that. <laughs> Can we have another test, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right then. Excellent. So we've got that. Okay. All right. There's a reason for this. Okay. So 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 who who got who got 10? Okay. Who got 10? Okay. Is that, is that okay? All right. Key, okay. Let, all right. Let, let's let's go. All right. Who got over 20? Okay. Good. Good. Over 50? Okay. Good. 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 50. Okay. Okay. A few. Few. All right. All right. We still got a few. All right. Did anybody get over 60? I will need to check. I will check. <laughs> All right. All right. But, uh, okay, good. Safe to say. Safe to say. Okay, okay. Did everybody here do not a little bit significantly better than before the first time? Everybody did significantly better before. Okay. Who would, who feels that if they had maybe one more minute, they could maybe complete all of it? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that is what it's about, my people. Why are we going through this? This you can relate to your studies, 
your private practice. When you go out there, either you're seeing patients, you may be seeing patients this afternoon, you may be seeing patients next week, or maybe you might be seeing patients after you graduate. We need, we can either figure things out, or we can have a system. A system will help guide us, which is already planned out, somebody who can guide or a method of learning by which you can achieve the end result a lot quicker, a lot better, and it will give you more fulfillment and enjoyment. Right? We agreed with that? And that's what this was about for me. When I came across chiropractic spinal correction. And in particular, the chiropractic biophysics method. The clinical biomechanics of posture and its correction. Why did I come across this? Because it was so important for me. Because it was important for me to, to, to know about the internal structure. Because I had an understanding, uh, a belief, uh, an, an understanding that the body can heal itself can heal itself. And the body heals itself by what? The brain communicating with the body. The nerve system is what improves the body, right? But, and how does it work? The brain sends a signal down the spinal cord, out through the spinal nerves to every single organ, cell and tissue of the body. It is responsible for health. It is the, and the absence of that good communication is what is responsible for disease, disease, disharmony of the body creating issues. Does that make sense? So that is what I embraced. That is what I, that was my love, and my passion. The philosophy, the science, the art of chiropractic was, was about that. All right? And I'm going to, and we're going to, and by the way, I'm going to tell you that physiotherapy, physio, I need you. My people, my friends now, I'm going to catch you all. I need you. We, we need, we need to work together for the betterment of of health of our people, and I'll tell you where, where that where that fits in. Okay, um, so I had a love for that, but then I knew that there was a better method. I wanted to help. Yes, I wanted to help correct adjusting the spine to relieve the the cause of ailments to to help nerve communication. But we said, well, first of all, how do we actually know the extent of the problem? Yes, we palpate, we find out, yes, you palpate, yes, you have an area of restriction, it is stuck, but then how many of you have ever had someone say, well, how do you know? Show me, show me, show me the evidence, we're in a society of a delil, as they say, yeah, show me the delil, where, 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 where's the evidence, show, show me, how do I know? Well, for that, we need an objective measure. We need an objective measure to understand what is normal, and what is abnormal? Is the spine aligned? What is correct alignment? Well, this was studied by this chiropractic biophysics. We have come to understand that the spine from the AP, the anterior posterior view, frontal plane, it should be straight. And what did we say? From the sagittal plane, laterally, should the spine be straight? No. no. It should have curves which mirror an elliptical model, like an S-shaped. This, if you go back as early as the, I believe it was the 1960s, by medical doctor, uh, Dr. Alf Bregg, Swedish doctor, did many, much, much studies, you know, you can, and if you're not sure, ask, you know, ask me, ask professor here. It, much work was done on the central nervous system and how it is uh, regulated by this spinal structure. And since then, there was works of many doctors in the chiropractic field. The founder of this chiropractic biophysics uh, uh, field and specialty was Dr. Don Harrison. And he has passed away now, and it has been continued by his son, Dr. Deed Harrison, who have conducted much research. And with the collaboration and the help of Professor 
Ibrahim and his team as well have uh, a lot of work has been done in the field of spinal correction of chiropractic biophysics to bring about objectively the correction of the spine to restore health are we making the body better or are we bringing the body back to how it was designed we cannot improve upon nature we cannot improve upon what the Almighty has given us all we can do is try to preserve to maintain that optimum health as best as possible and this system is the best at doing that and I gravitate just like you just like you here with a little guidance with a little assistance the job became much easier these great pioneers these great forefathers and giants in the profession and in the field of science rehabilitation have provided a system that you know what just work the system and you get fantastic results what do we do we make if you go to the top left initially and you'll be and this is where the team approach comes in in my clinic what I'm looking for how our approach is and typically in this this method of spinal correction we need a team we need chiropractic we need rehabilitation when it comes to the rehabilitation portion I believe in no better collaboration with chiropractors chiropractic physicians and specialists and people with their A game in the physiotherapy field this is the perfect marriage which can give lasting outcomes and success for humans who are suffering all right so something you'll be very familiar with all right we'll do an initial consultation all right. we'll then we'll take the health history we'll find the primary complaint sir may I, may I borrow you for a second please we'll and this is typically what what we would do have a seat sir have a seat yeah. sorry your name is Khalid Mr Khalid oh, nice to meet you Dr Sharik Ali um, we'll, so we'll, ta we'll take a health history right we know, we know this we'll ask about pain make sure who checks range of motion here range of motion very important as an indicator I will do this as an indicator you can as an indicator of what may be going on, on the inside we know that there are certain natural norms and we know that if we are not within those normal average limits that it is a sign an indicator of a problem all right we'll find out the primary complaint okay in this case it is low back pain right the low back the the, the facet the joint is that the case the upper and the lower the upper and the lower body yeah? so, so this has been going on for how long now five years five years, huh? years. five years so, so you, you find out so you find out the onset how did do you know how it happened was there an injury I had the slip disc when lifting something it first started in the neck first and started then it in radiated the I had a muscle tear you had a muscle tear first it was in your neck yes and then you start radiated, to note it yeah. radiated down to the lower back interesting interesting a lower back issue <coughs> the patient is telling us first started in the neck next time a patient tells you he's got a lower back pain are we going to assess only the lower back no. No. let's get good we need to be global about this this the medical profession the textbooks they've taught us cervical spine how many bones Perfect. next is the dorsal or thoracic spine 12 then we've been taught about the next section which is lumbar. lumbar spine how many bones five. five then we have the sacrum coccyx are they individual segments is it fused depends what stage of life okay this is what we've been taught guys how many spines do we have in our body 
your body wasn't created with sections. Right? This is one spine. One spine. If you have an issue in one area of your body, a knock-on chain of events, you are likely going to have an issue elsewhere. Does, does that make sense? Right? So when we assess, we assess global. This is the only way to assess the body. We assess it globally. Okay? So we do that. We find your health goals. We find out... And, and, and I'm going to and I'm going to tell you something now, which may be contrary and which may not be the textbook version, but you all are either in practice or you will be in practice, and you will might not have one hour. You might not have thirty minutes. You might have to think on your feet. Okay, if you're asked to make a diagnosis and a plan of management, so you're going to need to know: Did you have uh, any previous treatment? Yes. What have you tried? Physiotherapy, chiropractic. Chiropractic, physiotherapy. So, so immediately we're finding out what the patient has had. So this, the category comes, if the problem is still there, as per medical reports, your medical reports guys, you make sure the patient has failed conservative care. This is usually the standard of care because if you go to an orthopedic surgeon, at this stage, orthopedic surgeon will say, okay, you've, you've failed conservative care. If you have a you'll have certain imaging done this is what will happen if you, any any of us have any ourselves or any family members that have been to orthopedic for a issue or something just if you if you have you will you will you will be familiar with this that you will go they'll find they'll have these questions what have you tried have you tried anything else they'll they'll do a scan not many orthopedic tests anymore orthopedics tell them to use orthopedic tests but there'll be the imaging and then there'll be a criteria, decision to make. Is the area of lesion in the facet joint? Is it the nerve? Is it the disc? If you haven't had any conservative treatment yet, the standard of care is to first put the gentleman under conservative treatment. Physiotherapy, chiropractic treatment, pain pills, right? He will go through, they'll say, this, take the six sessions, take the 12 sessions, right? We, maybe we're familiar with this, yeah? Then you'll go back again. If, if, if the primary practitioner has done a great job, or, if, if, or more likely if the patient has complied with his treatment schedule, all right, then he'll likely may get good results. But if he, if he does it, and then if he does, then the, then the orthopedist is like, okay, fine. If we haven't, got the right results or if they haven't improved or haven't shown a level of significant improvement then they make if you've exhausted conservative care you are a candidate now for surgery this is the one two three protocol isn't there a better way can't there be something else that we can we can do to avoid these surgeries so we'll go through <coughs> So you must document that. So we'll then go through a system of uh, posture analysis, and I'll, and I'll go through that. If you stand up for me, and we'll, we'll go, we're going to go through this in, in a moment here. By the way, is it okay at the end if I can offer something to you, an opportunity to you, if that's okay? Yeah, we're going to do that. Right. We're going to check the alignment, the posture, postural scan from the side. We check ear to shoulder. Shoulder to pelvis, pelvis to heel. Just, just, just a quick scan. Again, it's because we're looking for certain signs of a potential problem, but then as per the protocol, we will image the gentleman. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will image the gentleman of the full, for the full spine to see the alignment of, yes, his lower back, but also to get an understanding of why why there is this stress happening in the lower back. All right? Then, when we do that, we provide a report of findings. Okay? We, explain to the, we explain to the patient, um, we, ch we check the x-rays, we look at the normal, we look to see, is the image straight from the front? Does it have these normal curves from the side? 
and we tell them that we are looking for areas of restricted movement in the lower back. Yeah? We're talking about the lower back. We're looking for the cause of this ailment, this pain. Why is your nerve irritated? What is, it, is your nerve irritated due to disc, due to the joint misalignment, due, due to a spinal structural translation or a rotation? All these things are going to create restricted motion in the spine. Restricted movement in the facet and the, the intervertebral disc. So the chiropractic portion is then to create movement in that again. Why? To help alleviate that tension on the nerve, to help the body work better. Now we have science, we want to do something a step better. We want to make sure that we've seen through research, we don't want it to be a short-term fix. Oh, I felt good, but then I stopped and a few months later the problem issue came back again. We want to make sure that we structurally correct this. And that's where the next stage comes along, this postural correction through chiropractic biophysics. And this is where we need we need physiotherapy, we need to work in collaboration where we do a specific protocol with the acronym EAT, E-A-T, where we exercise the patient. We get myofascially, we, we loosen these muscles and I can't think of any better professionals than yourselves. So guys, when you go to your job, if you're working in a job or if you're, in a, if you're stuck in a hospital and they're just putting you to do the, do the machines, I've come for the ultrasound, yes? Put the gel, put the machines, yeah? Guys, you have your mind, you have your mouth to speak, to advise, and you have your hands. Don't lose this dexterity. You have this dexterity. You can, my, <clears throat> the research shows the manual therapy that you can do can help alleviate tension. We will exercise. We will e eat being the exercise and we will maneuver the body. We will get them to do specific, um, Exercises and balance. Did I, did I have a picture of that here? There's, there's different technologies. I will, I will send you this stuff to, to help to exercise and retrain the neck to help balance proprioception. Yes, myofascial release. We must do all these things. Stretching, lengthening. We, mu we must do this. Then comes the A, the adjustment. Remember, the chiropractic portion, adjustment for the correction of motion within the facet to alleviate the cause of nerve interference, to alleviate the cause of dis-ease. And then we also have the T, traction. Right? This is the mechanics now. In the low back, we will place specific traction wedges, there'll be home device, home orthotics, as well as in-office traction. We will measure to see how much translation, deviation, rotation has occurred as per x-ray analysis in the AP, the lateral planes. We will see how much deviation there is. Yeah, we're going to get scientific now. We're going to measure and then because and we're going to bring that back to its as close to its normal position. How do we know it's normal? Because through the studies, through the science, through the literature, we have established norms based on your size, based on your posture, that your neck should be a certain angle and your lower back should be a certain angle. Our aim will be through specific tractioning, which we're very pleased to say that we are the only centre in, in and the United Arab Emirates that are focused on this to bring about curve correction back as close as possible towards its normal position. Isn't that great? We've talked about surgery being there to try and a kyphotic neck. Remember we talked about the kyphosis. We talked about losing spinal alignment and when it gets to a significant level it becomes something known as ASD, adult spine disease. There is a criteria of that and if you have certain parameters, if you fall out of these parameters, you have scientifically a bad health outcome. You become a candidate for surgery and you see many fusion, many, many fixations. But isn't there another way? 
isn't there another way to try something conservatively to avoid the fusion? Because if you have ASD and you require surgery, then that brings on another ASD. And I always tell the patient this, I always tell the patient, you know, we need, um, we, we need, we need medical, we need, um, we need great doctors, we need great orthopedics, we need great trauma in the cases of first aid. If I break my arm, I want emergency first aid, right? All right. For chronic conditions though, for chronic conditions, there surely must be another way than a lifelong of pharmaceutical agents being ingested in our body, causing chemical chemical disturbance. Remember we talked about subluxation, three things, chemical, mental, physical. Surely there must be another way. So shouldn't we explore this as professionals? Shouldn't we explore the, 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 the non-surgical elements and try and do our best to try for the patient to bring that patient's posture back towards its ideal norm, the way that we have an understanding of how it was designed to be, right? Because we've accepted that there is a power greater than ourselves. We didn't make this body. It was made by a greater, by something much greater, right? And so we cannot improve on this body. Remember, we accepted that, that this body, the way we have it, is perfect. You can't improve on perfection. We can only try to bring back to that level and that structure back to our design so that then we can maintain health. Does that make sense? Yes, guys? Um, so then, we establish that. We give the patient their, uh, their report. We would explain to them. So I would explain just like, so you would come, you'd have your x-rays done either the same day or the next day. We would analyze alignment drawings and, we, and then we would say, okay, here, sir, here's your problems. Typically, as per the CBP protocol, we can expect X number of corrections based on based on your present case and typically we're looking at an initial uh, as per the evidence we're looking at 30 to 36 visits of spinal adjustments of tractioning and of ex exercise as well as in home therapy okay this uh, this research has been done you know th this research been done we will do that at re-evaluation stage we will then re-x-ray to see how close you have come to that, if you've made an improvement or if not. If the, the outcomes are such, you will come to either near normal, your, your, your curve, your body, your posture will be returned to as great as it can be. You'll, you'll either become perfect and great, then it's a case of maintain that. Look after yourself, keep a checkup of your spine, eat right, get to bed early, do good things, have good, good spiritual habits. Love, health, wellness, mentally found, and keep a checkup of your spine because it's the control system of your body. Yeah, do that. Then maintenance, or you've either reached the maximum level of improvement. There, there is there is this stage where we, based on your posture and your underlying conditions, arthritis, there is a certain amount that we feel you can improve. And again, maintain that or compliance. You'll have a compliance issue and the patient will stop care, of course they're released. Or if you get a certain percentage of correction and it doesn't correct as well as you'd want it to and you feel that there's more improvement can be made, you put them through another cycle. This is the protocol. This is how you'll manage lower back pain. If you take anything on board here guys, it's that make sure you keep your test global. Look at the full picture. Understand the person. Use your hands, all right? We've got, <clears throat> we're almost done now. We're gonna go back just to the posture. Do we all have our pens? Do we all have our pens with us, yeah? You're gonna need that in a minute. And what's the benefit of correction? Well, you can see, 27 year old female. This is just, this is just one example of me and my team. Uh, we could go on forever, but I'm just going to show one example. Came in with, why? Initially, lower back pain. If we only looked at the lower back, we'd only have a small, very small snapshot of the picture. 
we wouldn't know that potentially she's got a forward head that is placing a mechanical load and is stretching the spinal cord and could be impacting her back. Make sense? The head, they say it's the weight of a bowling ball. You shift a bowling ball forward, it pulls everything. The, the studies are out there. So with low back pain, we go through a correction and then look, after our CVP protocol, look at that. The green shows where her spine should be, the red shows where it was. This one, go to a doctor, a chiropractor who is not versed in spinal correction, or worse, thinks that posture is not important. Go to a doctor who only feels pain relief is important. That's the first red flag as a patient, who only feels that gets you out of pain. That's the job of the pharmaceutical, that's, that's the medicine. You do, if you're only concerned with pain, you don't need to see me. You don't need to see a chiropractor. You don't need to see a physiotherapist if pain is your only thing. We want to restore function. And like this, who thinks that like this we're going to have a declining function in later life? At 27 we're like this. What will it be like at 37? With the effects of gravity, with the effects of the sitting lifestyle that we went on, that we talked about sitting, eating, the smartphones that we talked about in our lifestyle today. Our parents, they had, our parents had it tough. We used to, we used to think about, I want to ask, go back to your grandparents, or go back to your great-grandparents. Who knows about their great-grandparents? Who, who has some recollection of their grandfather, grandmother's parents? Who has some idea about this, their history? All right, who, know, who, has, good. who knows about their grandparents? Who knows their grandparents? Okay. Now, if you know their lifestyle, we are an international group here. We come from, I'm from the UK. We have people from all over. We, we are in the United Arab Emirates. We have students from all over. We have an international community, alhamdulillah. Just compare, it doesn't matter which part of the world you are from, just tell me, raise of hands, who feels that their grandfather was more active than them? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Who feels <laughs> right next? Another question. Okay, so so th maybe that's that's many many years ago, right? Let's go to another one. Okay, look at our parents then. Okay, the first generation before us. Whose parents here were more active than them? Physical. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Who's okay? Who had better? Tech. Who had better gym equipment? Our grandparents or us? Us. us. Okay. <laughs> Who was more active? Us or them? Them. them. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, who's got more advances in technology? Us or them? Who, who's got the latest things here? Yes. 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 Who likes technology? Who, who wants to have the latest in healthcare? Who wants the most idea? Yes. 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 Who's, who's got a more variety in cuisine now? Our grandparents or us? us. Our parents or us? us? Us. Who's got access to better health care? Us. Or be better so-called yeah, health care? Us. Yes? All right. As a society, would we say that as a society here, we have more opportunity than our parents? Yes. Yes? Yes? As a society, are we more well than our generation above? <laughs> I'm not telling, just something to think about. Just something to think about. We're going, we're seeking to, we're going forward, but we're getting worse. What our sedentary lifestyle, again, Forbes asked me about, Forbes asked me to interview on me this, I spoke very clearly to Forbes magazine. I told them clearly. Every, it was about the healthcare edition, it was all about technology. I said, technology, yeah, yeah, great, but it's ruining us. 
I'm sorry, it's ruining us, yeah? I like to fight sometimes as well, yeah? It's, it's, uh, and so, so this, from a sedentary lifestyle, in the absence of in infection or inherent disease, most, the vast, vast majority of what we're dealing with, guys, is lifestyle-based issues. And because of the lifestyle, this lady, 27-year-old lady had this. If the lifestyle was allowed to continue without the right protocols, without the specific chiropractic biophysics, without an understanding of clinical biomechanics of posture, without addressing and treating globally rather than just locally the pain, this lady had a bad health outcome. With intervention, 12 weeks, wow. Oh, oh where is it? Look, look at the difference. Much closer, right? Towards, towards the expected norm. And that's what we can see repeatedly again, again, and again. Um, we're we're going to do, do one more thing and then, then we're going to wrap this up. Remember we talked about posture, okay? We're going to need to get into, we're going to need to stand up again. We're going to need to get into groups of two or three. Two or three. Remember we looked at this, and we looked at the postural assessment. We can, we can invest in the best technology as well, or as an indicator, we can, we can keep things simple and move on, because we're going to be in private practice. Get your pens, please. Everybody stand up again. Everybody stand up. Okay. Stand up, please. Yes. What's it? What's it? Do something quickly. Do it now or after? After. It'll be in two minutes. He, he left his meeting just to say thank you for your talk. Just for a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you for standing up, everybody. I believe there, there's. I believe our dean is. It's a couple of minutes. It, it's, it's literally three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Sorry. Okay. Everybody. I, I I think the group will like this. Um, Sana, please. Do we have a pen, please? I had a pen there, didn't I? Yeah? Now, quickly we're going to check alignment. Yeah? Now, we're just going to see how pandemic this is. How pandemic this is. Now, get your pens, all right? On one person get in front of the other. If you're in a group of three, just one person observe and the other two discuss. Take your fingers, just place on top of the shoulders. Place on top of the shoulders. Look at those two fingers. And just make a note, is it totally balanced or is one higher, one less? Just get a thing of that. Now then, just get a mental note. Then next, we move on. We don't, we don't ponder on these things. You just know mentally, done. Next thing, we go to the shoulder blades, yes? The way the shoulder blades, if you can't find them, ask the person to put their shoulders back and then just feel, and just feel the points at the bottom, the base of the scapulae. The base of the scapulae. If you're unsure, ask the person to extend back and then just go down. Then, you can get your pen and put at the base of each. Is one side higher? Is the pen balanced? Is it the same or is one side less? Okay? Do that. That's already given you an indicator of your scapulae. Next, next we move on. We're going to check the pelvis. With the pelvis, get your hands, yes? Get your hands. And when they say put your hands on your hips, go in. Go in, be firm with, with your patients. With your patients, don't, don't, don't touch them. Don't hold them. Feel. Is the finger level high or less? Once you, then you've got one, two, three. Next, you go to the side. And this will work. And that's why, by the way, when anybody comes into my office, they do not remove clothes. If your hands are sensitized, I'm sorry, I was taught, we remove we clothes, I do it, everybody is fully clothed. People wear niqab and come to, people wear hijab, every, everybody is fully clothed with me. As long as we're in a country, we're not wearing a, a puffer jacket like in London, like, like you know, it's so, the clothing is pretty thin, you can get idea, you can get the ear. Now, get the pen, place it on the shoulder, move it up towards the ear, then find the middle of their ear, the meatus, and see is that pen directly straight or is that meatus slightly forward or slightly back? Have it mental, okay. Ha. That's it, everybody sit down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right then, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up, okay. And now for this opportunity. Everybody
everybody, everybody sit down. Everybody sit down. Um, and that's it. We've got to be quick like that. We've got to be quick. We cannot, we cannot spend 10 minutes doing postural assessment. It's got to be fast, yeah? It's an indicator. It is not a final diagnosis. It is an indicator of a potential structural misalignment. Does that make sense, everybody? Please raise your hands if we found here on the other person at least one misalignment where it was not balanced. At least one that we found on the other person. <laughs> Most of us here found one, yes? Did we find more than one potentially? Yes. Is the person necessarily having back pain? No, not necessarily, right? But we have an indicator of a potential structural misalignment that could be creating an issue which should be evaluated properly in order to bring about the correction through a specific technique for the restoration of health and disease. Listen, has, has this been, so far, has this been, I'm going to be wrapping up, but has this been interesting in any way or has it been, has it been informative? All right. Now, now here's the thing, the, the next sheet in there is, it has been my pleasure, I'm so happy that you've all come, okay, you are my friends, you're not my colleagues, you are my friends. I've got an opportunity for anybody who is associated with the University of Sharjah, either through students or has been at, in attendance today, okay? I am going to give the opportunity, if you feel that what with the work we do is in any way, if you feel that uh, there is something that we could, it would be my absolute pleasure to have you come and observe the new patient process to see how efficient it is. I believe, if I may give my humble opinion, it may... It may just give you a, a few tips, or, or, or maybe something, something different. Maybe give you a little bit of a guide on how to do things differently in how to manage, manage a patient. In order to do that, I'm inviting you to come and observe me. The criteria is bring one of your family members. They need to be older, above 40, so a, a, parent, a parent or a sibling or so, but above 40, we need to have significant structural misalignment. And we will, I will provide a free examination. All right, there'll be no charge as uh, I, will, I will provide this and I will show you step by step on how you can then do this with your future, with your future patients. And you will know firsthand with your family member and you will know how to better look after them. Do you, would that something anybody would be interested in? Yeah. yeah, good, good. Please, please feel free. Just either call us or send the message. It'll go through to Sana. And, um, and it'll be my pleasure to have you. Why? Because I, we here need you. We need to work together to bring about conservative care for the management of lower back pain, but also for the rest of the body for the health of humanity for Dubai, Sharjah, the Emirates, the UAE, the Middle East and the world itself. There's a big difference that you can make that we all can make. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. It's very interesting. Oh, How are you? <laughs> Pleasure. Some, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Dr. Mohammed, thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Sorry, sorry for missing Shaka. out. I, I believe it. this was inspirational. And uh, there will be part two and three, inshallah, in the future. Thank you very much for your time. Mm. On behalf of the college, uh, I present to you this very <laughs> humble token of appreciation, <laughs> along with uh, a <laughs> small certificate of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is not enough uh, for us to express the gratitude. Uh, this is too uh, kind. Yeah. This, this is, is why kind. we have to come to your clinic to express gratitude there. <laughs> Inshallah, please. <laughs> you are most welcome and thank you, faculty, colleagues, friends. It is an honor to be here for you to see value and to want to seek my humble opinion and it, it really means a lot and it is my hope inshallah that this relationship continues for the betterment of our communities and for our own
Thank you.